Okay, welcome to the Vibron back. Uh, my name is Luis Consistre. I work for Dell as a principal consultant. And today we are going to talk about a very hot topic, software-defined networking and network function virtualization. So what we are going to cover today, we are going to define what is software-defined networking. We are going to talk about the architecture of and the overview of software-defined networking. And we are going to see the benefits of implementing software-defined networking in our data center. On the other hand, we are going to talk about NF NFV, Network Function Virtualization. We are describe and check the overview. Uh, we are going to talk about the benefit of Network Function Virtualization, and we are going to wrap up. Uh, so let's start with the definition of SDN. So when we talk about SDN, there is actually not a single definition. However, we can get on to, to the internet and find the following definition. SDN is an approach to compute networking that allows network administrator to manage network services through the abstraction of higher level functionality. Wow, that's a very complex definition. I remember uh, in an interview that Martin Casado, the father of the SDN, he said that he's not sure anymore actually was SDN or how to define SDN in one single concept. So there is actually multiple, multiple view, there is three view, uh, to define software-defined networking. So let's start defining OpenSDN. So OpenSDN uh, uses the protocol OpenFlow. And OpenFlow uh, is the protocol implemented by Open Network Foundation. And SDN, uh, they define SDN as the separation between the control plane and the data plane. And the network devices are updated and controlled using the protocol OpenFlow. On the other hand, we have the SDN via APIs, and this is uh, this functionality is done by Cisco. And in that approach, basically we have all the functionality of the network, the network devices exposed uh, to developer to be manipulated and controlled and programmed using APIs. The last approach is SDN via overlay, and this is actually the VMware approach. And in that one, we use VXLAN. Uh, across the network infrastructure. So in order to have a better understanding, let's compare the traditional architecture and SDN. So in the traditional architecture, today we have, today our network has two functions. So we have in the data plane, the data plane function is to forward traffic to the ultimate destination, and the control plane uh, is in charge of control on computer routing tables, and that allows the router to make the decision, to make the right decision how to, the traffic has to flow. So in today's data center, every network device has their own control plane and their own data plane. And the data plane and the control plane runs locally. So protocols like OSPS run locally in every single device and exchange package between them to get to know the infrastructure, to get a better view of the infrastructure. But there is not a single device that has visibility of the entire topology. So from the management point of view, if we have 100 devices, we will have 100 control plane, 100 data plane, and 100 managed interface. So once again, the control plane is the local brain and run in software. And the data plane is in charge of forwarding the package from one device to another one. So finally, in a traditional data center or in a traditional network, you cannot modify the control plane. On the other hand, we have the software-defined network. So in the architecture of software-defined network, the networking, what we have done is we have centralized the control, and we have just one controller. So there is no longer controller resides on the network's devices. So it provides network devices, centralized control, centralized policies, centralized configuration, and easy management. And all these devices can be manipulated through the controller, also using IPI. So let's talk about the benefit of software-defined network. So software-defined networking is inexpensive because we have the ability to run every single device, so the network device, we can run it because all the features and the, the features are implemented in software. So we have central, cent it's a centralized control. So we can 
having a centralized brain, we have a optimum road that can be calculated for each flow. So we have optima optimization of the network because we can utilize the network without sacrificing service quality. We can have something like filter package. So we can filter package as soon as they get into the network. We can do micro segmentation. We can also modify the header of the package that get into the network. And if we think that they are suspicious traffic, we can redirect the traffic to an IDS or IPS. We can have load balancing, and also we can have fault tolerance. So on the other hand, we have network function virtualization. So what is actually network function virtualization? Network function virtualization is an initiative to virtualize network services that now being carried out by propriety dedicated hardware. Once again, this is a very complex definition. But what we can start telling is network function virtualization is different from network virtualization. So these are different concepts. So in the network function virtualization, what we want to do is we want to virtualize services like routing, firewall, that we used to run in the data center in hardware or appliance. So how it works? So in the way that the old data, data center, the traditional data center work is we have a routing or a firewall. And as soon as we start getting popular the service, we start buying more firewall. We start scaling out the, the firewall or the routing. So with this approach, network function virtualization, what we are going to do is we are going to create a pool of resources. We are going to virtualize that services, and we are going to grow elastic through the cloud. So let's talk about the architecture of the network function virtualization. So at the, fir the, first, the bottom layer for network function virtualization is the, the hardware, the compute, the normal compute, as every single data center. On top of that, we have virtual machines. So we have virtual machines. And on top of the virtual machine, we are going to run the services. So what services, what are the examples of the services that we are going to run here? So we are talking about traffic analysis, network monitor, load balancing, firewall, VPNs, and many more uh, services. So, but it's very important. It's not just about having the device, having the appliance, and virtualize the appliance, because actually it doesn't stop here. What we need to achieve when we are doing network function virtualization is we need to expand it. We need to cloud, we need to manage the, the, the services in a cloud way, in a fashion way. That means what I need more resources, I will spin more VMs and I will provide more services. So let's talk about the benefit of network function virtualization. So the first benefit is the couple of services from hardware. So in the traditional data center, we used to have appliance, and we have appliance to run these services. So we are no longer rely on this hardware, uh, on that kind of appliance, because what we are going to offer now is we are going to offer a pool of resources where we are going to spin VMs, and we are going to grow elastic. So we are going to have an elastic capacity. Uh, another benef benefit is that as we are not going to provision this appliance, this hardware anymore, we are going to do it in the virtual machine way, so we can do it in a quick and a fashion way. And the last thing is it's highly, cost it's highly customized. So you can actually, uh, when we have the appliance, like in a traditional way, you can offer just one services. On the other hand, having that uh, network function virtualization, we actually can adjust the service as the customer requirements. So let's wrap up here. So the first thing is software-defined networking and network function virtualization technologies are complementary. So they are not actually fighting each other. So SDN and SFV, so SDN increase the network flexibility through the holistic management of the network, enable rapid innovation and lower operating expenses. On the other hand, NFB was to reduce the CAPES and OPES to reducing the number of equipment and reduce the power consumption. Also, NFB reduced the complexity of the network, and you can deploy new capability in an easy way. Thank you very much.